Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. It's time now for the second part in my Wild West Exodus Showdown at Retribution painting tutorial series. And today we're going to be painting the Enlightened. Not to full tabletop standard of course, mind you. We're just going to get them done really, really quickly so we can start playing some games. So let's get started. The Strider calves, and I've got two of these. And then I've got one mono cav. So these will be painted very similarly because they're mostly armor. Um, I'll show you one that's completed. This is it here. Again, this is just completed to tabletop quality. I haven't done any highlighting or anything yet, but this is good enough to start playing games with. Now, the main color is a gray color for all the metallic areas. And for that gray, I'm using a mixture of Macrag Blue and Skaven Blight Binge. Dinge, not binge, dinge. I'm not going to binge on dinge. Uh, mix these to get two together gives me a, a slightly bluey grey colour, which I, I chose for these. So if we put in a few, couple of brushfuls of grey, and let's just see, one brushful, maybe one brushful of blue. It's probably a little bit too much. So maybe three brushfuls of grey to one brushful of blue and then we get a nice dark grey, slightly blue colour mix that with some water and then basically paint most of this miniature now I want it to be slightly watered down because I don't want it to be too thick um, but really I want to cover that most of the miniature with this colour except of course for the Poor little armless guy sitting in the cockpit. Now, if you have these miniatures, you might notice that I'm missing a little piece from the front in front of the guy. And this is it here. It's a little plastic guard piece that goes in the front. Now, for some reason, I lost one of those. So I've left them both off. I'm just going to see with if I can get away with leaving them both off. Otherwise, I'll put one on and come up with some substitute for the other. But I don't know how it happened. I was building them quickly, and I just missed that little piece. But never mind, it's not a crucial piece by any means. So I just make sure I get into all the little nooks and crannies. Now I'm jumping ahead a little bit showing you the finished figure, but I lost a bit of footage. Never mind, when I've painted the grey and blue, I washed it with null oil. And that darkens the grey a little bit, it gives a nice dark colour. And of course, uh, shades all the lovely detail and stuff. These little details I painted with Rune Lord Brass and those and iron breaker for the little hydraulic bits of metal. For the flesh areas on these two guys I'll be using deepkin flesh. There are three different uh, shirts on these and there's also a lot of uh, cords and wires. I'll use a lead belt for those cords and wires but for the shirts I'm using Xandri Dust, Deathworld Forest and Gorthal Brown. After painting those, I'll just wash the entire figure with Agrax Earthshade. Nice and easy. And I'll also wash any uh, little bits of the hydraulics, other exposed bits of metal. You can see also I've done the base on this one and uh, I've put quite a bit of the uh, brown and dust and dirt over the wheel so it looks like it's been traveling along on this dusty surface. And on this one I'm making sure to do these little bits as well with Agarax Earthshade. Next up I'll get some corn red and uh, just paint in these bits on the back of the engine. Um, also the front headlight. Now later on I'm going to highlight that more with yellow so it looks like it's glowing and everything but just for the moment I'm just going to keep it red. And there we go, we've got two striders and one monocav. Of course there's a lot of highlighting I can do to these and make that red glow and stuff like that and put a bit of metal on the barrels. Heaps of stuff I can do, but for the moment I can start playing with these and they'll still look fine. The next figure is Gustav Eiffel in this uh, walking chair of his. Now you're probably thinking, hold on, he's already painted it. Well, that's because I just lost a little bit of footage, um, but really it was only a tiny bit. Basically, I painted the main structure of this that same uh, blue-grey colour. 
And then I used a corn red to paint the back of his chair, just in there, using a brush to get right in there. And then the next thing I did was start on the trim. So let's pick it up where I was painting the trim. Now that's done, I'll paint the trim with Rune, Light, Rune Lord Brass. And also some of these leg pieces. So there's one leg done, I'll do the same for the other three legs. And also I'm going to paint some of these pipes and things at the back. Just the trimmings of those. There's all the trimming done. I use snake bite leather in the end for the kind of wooden areas of those pipes. And as you can see, there's also iron breaker at the top of the pipe. The rest is Rune Lord brass. Now I'll do his hat um, a dark grey using Skaven bite dinge. There it is. And his jacket, um, I need a sort of browny colour. So I think I might use snake bite leather again for that one. Um, oh no, I won't actually, because I've used it there for the wood. So um, maybe gore grunter fur, I think, for that. Nice and easy. Uh, Grey for his beard. And uh, I'll start with just black templar for the weapon. So let's start off with a little bit of retributor armour just to do this decoration on his hat. Now it might have been smarter again to do this separately from the chair. There's a few tricky areas to get into there, but if you can't see them too well, you don't have to worry about getting them just, just right. It's just a bit messy, so I'll have to retouch a little bit of that flesh there. I've put a bit of Seraphim Sepia on the flesh areas, and now I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade on all of the brass areas. And as you can see, I'm being a bit generous with it. I'm just going down into the grey areas as well. This, this gives the grey a bit of a little bit of a dirty look, but that's all right because that's kind of the look I want to go with for the enlightened. Slightly more grungy, and if necessary, I can clean that up a little bit later on. But for the moment, that looks pretty good. Just a little bit of seraphim sepia on the hat. And then, again, Agrax Earthshade on the rest. You can see that Gustav turns out pretty well, even without a highlighting pass. Um, and that'll be good enough for the table for the moment. Next up, there are two of these, the Iron Horses. And I've jumped a little ahead here because they're quite similar to the Iron Eagles, except they're simpler. They don't have the extra armor plating, etc. So um, I've used my same uh, blue-gray color for the most of the body. And again, uh, Rune Lord Brass for these pieces and Lead Belcher for those. Uh, these are all washed with Agrax Earthshade to give it a sort of slightly dirty look. And um, I've put the front on here and these have the two weapons on the front of this one as well, which are just Rune Lord Brass and Lead Belcher. And uh, then there's highlights of this dark red colour, which is um, Corn Red mixed with Rhinox Hide to give me that. And I'll highlight that up to a sort of lighter dark red, but uh, it's just been washed with Agrax Earthshade, so it's quite dark. So the main difference with this one is the figure. So let's paint this uh, rider on the iron horse. Let's start off with contrast snake bite leather for the leggings. And then I'll use contrast wildwood for his jacket. I've used Black Templar for his gloves, and now I'm using my blue-grey mix for his helmet. And there we go. Very simple. I could um, do two different colours for the leggings uh, if I wanted to, but I'm keeping this relatively simple. Uh, Snakebite leather for the pants and weird wood for the top. And I've added the uh, Rune Lord brass detailing to the helmet, like so. And um, what else? Black Templar for the... Uh, gloves and that's about it. Here's the other one, just a bit of flesh colour for the face with a seraphim sepia wash, um, but same colours, uh, they go together as a team, which is fine. And uh, again, we'll do more highlighting later, but for the moment these look pretty good. 
And those two look great on their bases. Next up, there's Emily Nugier, or Nugier, French speakers, please excuse my pronunciation. And these kind of figures are kind of tricky, aren't they? Because there's a whole lot of detail here, um, but it's hard to work out what's what. Really, there's just strange metallic nubbins and weird things, and this strange thing she's carrying. So, uh, in the interest of my whole approach to this, I'm going to keep it relatively simple. I'll use uh, Doom Bull Brown for the hair, and then a mixture of washes for the rest, and I'll let the washes bring out, bring out the detail. And of course, when you're doing your highlight phase, you can go back and, and pick out some of this fine detail a little bit more. Uh, the good thing about washes and contrast paints is that you can just give it a coat over the whole lot, and uh, it'll, it'll make the detail stand out nicely. So for example here, this is her hair, but she's got some kind of eye pieces there. I'll paint those a little bit later. For the moment, I'll just paint over the whole lot to make it easy. Using my Rune Lord brass, I'll paint this um, strange arm thing she's got with kind of articulated pincers on it. Very creative figures, very steampunky and weird. I'm actually dying to finish uh, these little paint jobs so I can get this on the table because I want to play the game. I've almost finished a rules summary and it looks like a good system. It's got some built-in rules for doing things like hunkering down and being on the lookout on buildings and things like that. So the rules do give it a Wild West feel, which is good. I do like rules to sort of um, give the game a feel for the particular genre. So, for example, Dystopian Wars really has a real feel for the steampunk naval thing with with the short-range squadrons taking off from aircraft carriers and things like that. While I've got that colour on my brush, I'll just paint the trim on this shoulder pad. And I might also use the same colour for this uh, shoulder armour that she's wearing. And there's kind of a, some kind of thing on the back here, some kind of generator or something. I'll make that brass as well. Who knows what all these little things are? Who cares? As long as it looks good on the table. Now she has some shin guards here, which I'm going to paint in Ironbreaker. And then there's also this uh, piece of machinery. It looks like some kind of, I think it's a, uh, a cybernetic dog head, actually. Yep, that's, that's actually what it is. Now that I look at it closely. So she seems to be, she must be repairing this thing. So the rest is some kind of jumpsuit, and there are various pouches and things, but I want an all-over colour all over the jumpsuit. Um, and then I can pick out the detail later. So in keeping with the other figures and just keeping it in the same kind of style, I'll use uh, good old... Weird wood contrast, such a useful contrast paint. I use it all the time because it gives a nice dark brown. Sorry, wild wood, I should say, not weird wood. There we go, super easy. And now a little bit of my grey blue mix, which I've still got on my palette, just to fill in this shoulder pad. This, of course, is the great advantage of having a wet palette that you can mix up a whole lot of paint and it can stay nice and moist and usable on the palette for quite a while. For Emily, I picked out some of the details with Ironbreaker, just a few of the buckles and things to add a little bit of detail, and this will all come together when I give it a wash. And I'll be washing it all with Agrax Earthshade and, of course, a Seraphim Sepia on the face and hair. There we go, after a wash, super simple, but still very acceptable for the tabletop. Next up is this lovely double-headed fellow called Smash and Grab, and this is pretty easy because half of him is all cybernetic. Uh, which is basically going to be uh, lead belcher with some rune lord brass uh, highlighting. And then the other side, I'm going to use gore grunter fur for his uh, trousers. And for his skin, I'm going to do a mixture of iron ratch skin and throw in just a little touch of lauren forest to give it a bit of a green tinge. And of course, the fist will be lead bel belcher as well. So let's put on those base colors. I've got this lead belcher. Um, Pretty well watered down, to so it flows easily into all these little details. There's all the lead belcher. 
I'll let that dry before I start doing the skin. So we've got Gore Grunt of Fur on the trousers there and a mixture of Iron Rack Skin or Iron Rack Skin, skin with Lauren Forest um, for a slightly green skin. Then I've used Rune Lord Brass to pick out some of the details in the metal. I'm going to leave this white just white because when I wash all this it will uh, shade the white and make it look like a grimy white uh, garment or rag as well. So I'll wash the flesh with a Thonian Camo shade and all the metallics with Agrax Earthshade. And Agrax Earthshade will go over those white areas as well. As always just soak up uh, any areas where it's pooling too much on the highlights. especially on that white. And here's smash and grab after a wash. Lots more detail to go on there and highlighting especially in these metallic areas but for the moment good enough for the tabletop. I've also painted some of that glow there in the backs of the striders. Very easy to do just with the fist in red and um, followed by orange, in this case Troll Slayer orange and then finally Uriel Yellow and they're just very easy brush strokes as you can see but from a distance they look great. I've also done a little bit of an orange highlight around the edge of it there, just the reflected light there and it looks great. Same on the headlights and also some little details on the Iron Horses and Iron Eagles. Here's my Wild West Exodus showdown at Retribution Starter Set so far. Now I'm sure many of you are thinking but they're not finished. They need a highlight pass and they need more time. And yes they do. Uh, I'm not denying that at all. But I'm also trying to show people that you can actually do a pretty good paint job very very quickly and start playing the game very quickly. Just getting some paint on the miniatures, using contrast paints, using washes. It doesn't take long to get a bunch of figures that look great from a distance. And let's face it, you are going to be looking at them from a distance as you move them around on the tabletop. Thanks very much for watching. This is the Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. I've got a rule summary and reference coming out for this game very, very soon now. So keep an eye on the website. I'll be announcing that soon. In the meantime, enjoy your games.